Let's say you're working on a design like this with an SVG illustration. Wouldn't it really be cool if we could animate all those cool little skeleton UIs that you see here? Now you could open it up something like Visual Studio Code after exporting it and animate each of those paths, you know, by yourself, by hand. That would really suck though. Or you could use a tool like SVGator to give you an intuitive UI to easily animate these elements, which is exactly what I'm going to show you how to do just like this. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. All right, so here I am in Figma. You could use Adobe Illustrator or any other vector application if you wish for this part. Um, so in Figma here, I have this shape. It's kind of like a, the shape of a phone in an isometric format. And by the way, if you want an isometric grid, just go to the Figma community and you can just grab this right here. And that's basically what I use to draw and guide you uh, in terms of your paths and stuff. So I have this shape here and I'm not going to sit here and design this whole thing from scratch. I'll just time, I'll do a time lapse of it. But I did want to show you one technique that's pertinent to this type of uh, animation tutorial and that is using masks, all right? So what I'm gonna do is just to show you real quickly, um, I, I'm just gonna get like a circle here and if I take this shape right here, uh, take both of these shapes and I click right up here where it says, I uh, click use as mask, it hides the background color and that's a frustrating thing. So all I do here, and it may not do this in other uh, vector applications, I just take this background right here, or this, you know, this the base layer, duplicate it, control D, then select this one, uh, the, the, the shape right here, and then use this mask and there we go. Uh, so that's the workaround for that. And so using this process, we can go ahead and just basically start designing our shape. So for me, I might make this smaller. Maybe this would be some sort of like card or something. Um, let me grab the color I have off to the side, just slightly lighter. There we go. Um, actually, that's kind of, there we go, okay. So, so basically what we wanna do is I uh, create basically a kind of like a, a skeleton UI. That's, that's my idea for this particular illustration. Um, and I'm going to duplicate that cause that's gonna be a mask as well. Um, and after I do that, I'm gonna take this one up and just move it slightly and make this one slightly lighter. There we go. Then I'm gonna take this uh, duplicate duplicate that one so we have two of these copies and take the top one with this new layer and then just use this mask there okay so that's a mask and we could double click into these and change them the positions and all that good stuff um, maybe I'll move this up just a tad bit more and then I'll go ahead and take I uh, this right here we can make it a little bit of an oval and just kind of just like rotate it to kind of make it look like a it's in that space a bit in this isometric format. I'm gonna use my other primary color. And in each of the uh, designs that I do, I'm gonna have several of these little elements or these like little phones. Uh, I'll have an accent graphic uh, like this, just to keep things consistent. Um, so then what we wanna do, we wanna make sure that, you know, we're able to take just this little card that's inside of the overall phone and make sure that that is a clipping mask uh, so it doesn't extend outside of here. So to do that, I, I'm gonna select everything except for this element and I'm gonna group that up, all right? And then I'm gonna take this element as well, both of them, and then use this mask. Now before I do that, I'm gonna take this one, duplicate it first, then we'll grab that then we'll do this, there we go. So now if I move this, or if I come in here specifically and uh, double click into it, now it is a mask. All right, that's important for when we get to the animation section basically uh, in SV Gator. All right, so um, for this one, I'm actually not even gonna bother uh, with a time lapse just because I already have this thing designed and why waste time? So if I <laughs> delete that, that's basically what I came up with. It's the same exact process of creating um, masks 
uh, for these elements. So this is a mask right here. That's masked in. Um, these we're going to animate and mask and all that good stuff. So once you have that, we can just take everything, right click, and then just copy and paste as, or copy as SVG. Um, so once you do that, you can also, and by the way, you probably can come over here, go to uh, export, choose SVG, that might be better. Export those nine layers. Now it's telling me export failed, interesting. So we could just copy as SVG method. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get a notepad, just paste that sucker in. We'll save that to the desktop. We'll call this svgator, I guess, dot SVG. Make sure we change the type uh, to all files and then save. All right, so now that's ready to rock in SVGator. All right, here I am in SVGator, a new project uh, window that's open up. We wanna choose Upload SVG, and here's all my other stuff here on my messy desktop. Um, SVGator, that's the one we want, and there we go. So as you can see over here, we have um, a bunch of uh, our groups, and these are all based on what was created in Figma. Um, Obviously, to make your life a little bit easier, you could probably name those. That's <laughs> something I don't ever do. Um, and down here, the most important thing here we have is the timeline. Um, and if, of course, if you've worked with animation software in the past, you'll know the timeline is uh, very important and integral to the experience. So uh, let's just get started. I'm gonna we'll go ahead and animate one of these, and, and just that way, you just understand how to use this. It's actually really simple. It's just about creating keyframes and moving things around. It's a pretty intuitive, easy to use interface. By the way, the pan around, you can just use your middle mouse button. I didn't know that before. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is basically, um, I want to delete this one. We don't need this over here. Don't need that. Don't need that. Okay, I. What I wanna do is first animate this top layer right here, and then also animate this element here, and they're gonna come in from opposite ends. So uh, we wanna make sure that uh, we're gonna come forward in this playhead area right around half a second. And we're going to then select this green little element here, and we'll choose to animate it. So we choose animate, and then we're gonna choose uh, position. All right, then we're gonna do the same thing with this element here. We're gonna click animate, choose position. Now we're gonna come back to the playhead and move it to zero. All right, once we do that, we can then take this and just move it out. Oh no, it's not in the mask right here, which is not a big deal. I, what I can do simply is take this ellipse and make sure that it's in this uh, path right here. So we just move this down right next to this path and it should hide, there it goes. So now if I move this playhead, you'll see it just comes up. All right, so we go back to zero and now we're gonna move this in the same fashion. So if I move up here, we'll move this all the way this way and let's hit play or just hit the space bar. There we go. Now it does have easings, so if we uh, select both of these and we choose this right down here and we click it, we have a bunch of different uh, easing types. So, you know, we could just do like um, ease in. All right, and you can also grab it and, and change it and, and all that good stuff. So once we do that, it'll affect uh, just the animation flow like that. Okay, so now, of course, we can go more complex with this. Uh, if we take this overall element, and so let me grab it. I think it's gonna be, let's see, it's gonna be group. Yeah, we can also animate that as well. So selecting that particular element, uh, we can come right here to half a second, and then we can go ahead, let's see here, we will choose animate and position. Let's do and scale as well, so you can do scale. There we go, so yours should look like this. I'll make this this file available, by the way, so you can follow along. Um, we'll come back here to zero, and then we'll just move this sucker off here. Um, and we could also scale it down uh, right around here. So if we just take scale uh, over here in the properties inspector, uh, let's just go to uh, control four here, all right, and we'll connect these. 
you know, we could scale it down by like to like 70%. All right. I uh, now if I go ahead and play, there we go. That's pretty cool. Awesome. So maybe it'll sit there. Um, we'll make it sit there. Let's see. Maybe like here to around half a second. So now we're going to add a keyframe manually. If I zoom up here, you can see what I'm doing to all those. And then we'll make it leave in much the same way. Okay, so um, I think we'll have it leave at the same speed. So we just have to move stuff around a bit. Um, and to do that, I will first start start with this one. So we'll hide again. This one, actually let's move the whole group as a whole. So what I mean by that is, uh, I think it was this overall thing right here. Yeah, we'll just move this over there. And then we can also scale that down as well. I think it was 0.7, there we go. Then I uh, will also want to take this element. Again, this is tricky because you can't really see where it needs to go, but we'll take this position as well. Uh, this is the green arrow, move that off. All right, so now let's see what happens. All right, that's cool. Awesome. So now, what do we what do what if we want to make it look like another card's coming in at the same time? Well, we could take this I uh, this group right here, and we could simply hit duplicate. Now you can see it'll create a duplicate of all of, of what's happening down there. All we have to do is just take these and move them, maybe like right around. Let's see. Let's put it like right there and see what happens. Nope, that's not what we want. We want to move this maybe like in the middle. Ah, we want to move it like right here. There we go. So do this. There we go. So that looks cooler, especially if we uh, especially if we have this set up so that it is going to repeat at the correct time. So let's. Uh, take this playhead and move it to like 2.4 seconds. All right, so that's not smooth. This It's uh, screwing up here at the end. So uh, let's see here if I can figure this out. Let me move this down here. Ah, I know why. What we need to do is get rid of these initial keyframes there. And then we'll put this back to like three seconds or so, and we're going to move everything back to the beginning. There we go. Let's, uh, and then probably just leave this right there. Let's try this. Yeah, actually, I think we could just do this. There we go. So we don't even need these keyframes at the end. All right, so we, what we could do is just take these, move them around here, we can get rid of these at the end. And let me zoom up here. And there you go. Uh, just through intelligently using these keyframes, you can go ahead and create really cool animations like this um, that infinitely loop. So to show you the um, original project, let me go back to my projects. I guess I could save that. We'll go ahead and choose this one. And that's basically the same concept that I did. This first one's more complex than these two. I'm just kind of moving things around back and forth. Um, and that's it. So once you have your animation ready to rock like this, uh, all you have to do is export it. Uh, in this case, I'm going to choose uh, SVG for web. and there's a, obviously a lot of options here. Um, you can export the name. You have the format as animated or static. Export IDs, unique or just the elements name. Animation type. You could use JavaScript. Now JavaScript, I believe, will allow you to tie into their API so you can do uh, interactive things to start and stop and all that good stuff. Uh, if you just want something like that, that loops like this indefinitely, just choose CSS only. 
uh, and that'll work. Uh, that's what I did. And then you can animation on start on load or just on mouse over, which, you know, that's handy to have the direction. You can do alternate reverse, reverse, et cetera, et cetera. Iteration count, infinite, that's what I want. Um, and you could do speed, um, responsive, and there you go. They just go ahead and hit export. And then we'll open it up in an actual project on a web page. And all you have to do is just put image source SVG. I, I named mine SVG test.svg. Um, and then open with a live server. And there we go. Looks awesome. So very smooth animation. I'm um, not sure how smooth it is in video, but here on my end in the browser, it looks great. Um, so I'm excited with this. I'm going to be using this on an actual landing page for an upcoming course. I uh, coming here in early 2023. All right, everybody, make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this, and I'll see you all later. Goodbye.